Welcome Fresh from Bearcats. Hey guys, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Miss Winship and I believe blue and gold. I'm happy to have you and look forward to getting to know you this year. Just wanted to kind of go over something really quickly with parents. We are going to be flipping our classrooms this year. Flipping your classroom means that students will be taking, watching videos at home that I make, taking the in place of the 45 minute instruction during the day. I mean, guys, how many times have you gone home after 45 minutes of instruction and you can't remember how to do your homework, right? Now you'll be watching the videos at home. They should be less than 10 minutes. And then when you come to class, we'll be doing your homework and group um, help. <clears throat> the classroom now will become the teacher is the, not the sage on the stage, but the guide on the side. I welcome you to join this with me this year. First, I want you to go and look on my website to get your first 100 quiz grade. Go to my teacher website, and by Friday, email me all of the information that you uh, see listed there. You can copy and paste it. Please put your student name and period number on the subject line. My website, my email is listed below. Also, students, if your parents aren't so good at checking their emails, if you would also put yours on there, but make sure you state that that's your personal email. All right, let's get started. We are going to be combining like terms today. That is our objective. Please write down these three words and then we will discuss them. So go ahead and get in your um, composition book and be ready to write. Here we go, a term. A term is separated by adding and subtraction signs. As you can see here, there are three terms. We have a 4x, a negative 3x, and a 2. The like terms are, ter are terms that have the same variables, and they have to have the same exponent or power. As you can see here, this x has a first power, and the second x also has a first power. Since 4x and 3x are like terms, we can put those together. The constant is the number on the end without variables or exponents. Now we're going to talk about coefficients. The number in front of the variable with the exponent is the coefficient. So one is the exponent, the variable, excuse me, the coefficient on the first term, and three is the coefficient on the second term. If there is no number in front of a variable, we consider that to be a one. First example, you can just watch or write these down if you like that better. We're going to simplify this expression by combining like terms. If you notice, the 72p has a p with an exponent of 1. The 25p has the variable of p with the exponent of 1. Sorry, guys. We're going to do hearts for now. Um, we can put those two together. 72 minus 25, which gives me 47p. The p's don't cancel. They just combine. Next problem, we're going to simplify this expression. We have a x to the fourth, another x to the fourth, which means they are like terms. Remember what goes in front of the x to the fourth would be a one. We have three fourths plus one. Well, we can put one and three fourths, but never, never, never would you see that written that way. Normally we would see it written as seven fourths. Do you remember? 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 gives you 7 fourths, and don't forget the x to the 4th. Now notice that the 4, the power of 4, stays the same as it was in the problem. Uh, next example, we have decimals, but if you notice, we have an m and we have an n, and those are not the same letter. I love these problems. The beginning is the end, and we cannot combine that in any way that is the answer. Anytime it says check it out, that means you need to write these down and these are your actual try it on your own homework problems. So pause me for a moment, write these down and show any work that needs to be shown and I'll be here waiting for you when you come back. Welcome back. We're going to try, see how you did on these three problems. See how um, well you're listening to my video. I just know you're listening very well. 16p and 84p, we have common um, terms, so they are alike. We can add them together and get 100p. 
Second problem, we have a t and a t to the second. You may not put those together because they are not like terms. Love those, don't you? That is the answer. Number three, we have an m to the second power, an m to the third power. Again, those cannot be put together. If you put it as m to the fifth, you are completely wrong, but we will correct it. And that is the solution. All right, continuing with our instruction. Now we're going to do some problems with distributive property. This one does not say check it out. It just says example. So feel free to write it down if you like to, but you are not required to write it down. The six that is in the front is the number that we're going to distribute. So we're going to multiply six times x, which gives me six x. 6 times 4, which is 24. And we're going to talk about a problem where that middle sign will change, but for this problem, it will stay a minus sign. Now, you'll hear me say this over and over, that plus 9 on the end do not continue to distribute the 6 to. We are just going to drop it. So if it's not in the parentheses, just drop it. All right, checking for uh, common terms. The 6x is the only term with an x, so I'm going to drop it down. You notice the negative 24 and the 9 are common terms. They are both constants. All right, the negative 24, notice how I circle it with the negative, and a plus 9. That adds to a 15. Remember, take the sign of the bigger number, 6x minus 15. Great job. We haven't fun yet. Most difficult example for today, we're going to distribute again. And the 4a, however, is not in the parentheses or in front of the parentheses, right directly in front. So what do you think we're going to do with the 4a? Yep, you're right. Drop it. Okay, the 2 is not just a 2, it's a negative 2. So we are actually distributing a negative 2 to the a, which gives us a minus 2a. And then we're going to distribute the negative 2 to the negative 1. And this is the one I was talking about where we have a negative in front. You just can't drop that sign. You actually have to multiply negative 2 times negative 1, which is a positive 2. All right, looking at this, we look for common terms. 4a minus 2a is 2a and then drop down the constant of 2. Final answer. Good job. Did you get that one right? You probably got it right before I even finished. Okay, this says check it out, so you need to write down these four problems with the other three that you have. Try them by yourself, and come back to me when you are finished. Welcome back, Freshman Bearcats. All right, we're going to check these problems out, see if you got them right. Looking at number four, do we have common terms? Well, yes, we do. Two-fifths added with one-fifth gives me three-fifths. Leave the variable with its exponent the same, and we have three-fifths x to the third. Number five, we have c squared and a c. They are not common terms because you can, because, so that you cannot put them together, and that is the problem. Problem is the answer. Don't you love those? Number six, 301 x's minus the one x. Remember the coefficient of a variable that doesn't have a number in front is one, and that is 300 x. Love it. All right, number seven. I'm gonna start with the a's. We usually put them in alphabetical order. 24 a and three a is 27 a. And then we have one b squared added to two b squared which makes 3b squared. Now you'll notice I'll kind of um, write my b's strange-like. I don't want them to look like sixes. So when you're in algebra, be really careful with your letters. All right, we are on our last page. I need you to try these two problems. Pause me for a moment and come back. Hey, we're back. All right, let's try number eight and see how you did. 9 distributed to a is 9a. 9 times negative 3 is minus 27. Drop the 4. Okay, common terms here, negative 27 and a negative 4. 9a minus 31. Is this your final answer? Can you simplify it in any other way? 
No, so we're done. 9a minus 31. Number nine, I want you to write it down, show all of your steps, bring it back tomorrow, and that's the first thing we're going to check. And now you're done. Number 10, the last thing you need to do is in the top right corner of your homework, I want you to draw a paw, a bear cat paw. Now there's a difference in a bear cat paw, a panther paw, and a bear cub paw. So that's what I'm trying to see if you know. Thank you so much for joining me on my first video. I've enjoyed making a few little bleepers here and there, but I'm really excited and look forward to getting to know you better. Bye.